Welcome to Halloween Madness with Kendall. Yeah, it's me. Hi. We have two things today. Two things. Little tidbits that you may not have known about prior. Yeah. Creepy, creepy stories. So who wants to go first here? It doesn't matter. Rock, paper, scissors? Why not? Okay, go. Uh, da, da, da. I got rock. I got scissors. Okay. Okay. You? What? <laughs> All I heard was... Bat, jur, jur. <laughs> you keep cutting in and out. Oh, really? I, well, I'm recording on a separate microphone, but... I think it's the internet. It's Fuck, dude. I don't I don't think it'll matter. Don't worry about it. Okay, yeah. I mean, So, you go first. You won. Okay. Uh, my story is about... Um, you don't need to. You don't need to do it like you're a fourth grader. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I know it's Halloween season, but this is actually like a Yule time season kind of thing. Um, it is a beast-like creature from Alpine folklore. His name is Krumpus. <laughs> he is the anti Santa Claus. Okay. Okay. I I I kid you guys not. In contrast to, like, St. Nick, who gives kids toys and stuff on Christmas, Krumpus comes to your house, throws you in a sack, and then takes you away to his lair. Why does he do this? Uh, because that's what happens when you're a bad kid, man. That's just his M.O.? Yeah, that's just his, his, his main operation, man. So let's take a minute and look at this picture uh-huh. <laughs> that they provide us with on Wikipedia. All right, let's just take a second, okay? Uh huh. We got Tom Hanks there as the father in the back, smoking a pipe, not giving a J. Just smiling, like, go on, take my kid away. Damn it, Jimmy! I told you this would happen, didn't I? You got a kid over in the far left behind a chair who's genuinely frightened. You know, he doesn't want anything to do with this. Yeah. Mom's just kind of like, eh, do what you want. You ain't taking these two. They're good. And then you got the Pope chilling out in the back of the room like, yeah, boy, you're coming with us. And check out that chandelier. Oh, wow. And what's the thing in the corner? Is that a rocket ship? What? <laughs> Come on, dude. There's so much going Like, you can tell the little kid behind the chair on the far left, Krumpus has taken him before. <laughs> he, he's, he knows, dude. Like, he knows what's going on there. The little girl's like, okay, I don't want this to happen to me. It hasn't happened yet. It's about to happen to that little boy. (laughs) And father's like, good, one less. (laughs) One less mouth to feed. (laughs) One less gift to buy this season. (laughs) Take him. Did you notice (laughs) Krumpus? Did you notice Krumpus's sack is more like a bin full of, like, scary things? (laughs) Dude, and there's straw sticking out the back. What is that about? Is he, does he ride a broom like some sort of witch <laughs> nice boots krumpus yeah dude <laughs> you you wait you you fly fishing or something jesus dude <sighs> oh man so anyway i guess krumpus uh <laughs> like also has rusty chains and bells that he swings around <laughs> to notify you that he's coming to your house <laughs> what a sick mofo man <laughs> jingle jingle <laughs> well, bring out your kids yeah, so... Yeah, but, I mean, there's there's yeah. lots of... He's actually fixated in a lot of lore, though. Um, a lot of... Mostly Germanic folklore, but... Um, gosh, like, according to this wiki page, he's, like, all over the place, man. Yeah, and there's some creepy stuff about Krumpus here. Yeah. So, yeah, watch out. I, you know, it's like, fuck Slenderman when you got this going on. This is way worse. I know, and in this in this picture, this next picture, Max, uh-huh. click on the link. Okay. Like, Krumpus is just going for the ass, and that little girl don't give a shit. <laughs> she just blank don't care. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, nope, Mama told me not to look. That is a terrifying picture. Yeah, he's a <laughs> Gras von Kump- Krumpus. <laughs> See that, man? He's just going right for the, the, the booty. <laughs> he don't care. He... He threw that kid up on that burlap basket, and he's just going to go right for the booty. Dude, dude, am I the only one that noticed that he has a hoof and one normal foot? Yeah, I saw that too. That's <laughs> creepy. I guess the artists are just like, oh, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't want to draw feet. 
<laughs> okay. Well, that's been Krampus, guys. Krampus, yeah. Krampus, watch out. Don't open that and give that candy this Halloween. Yeah, man. Be good this... This season. Season. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> it's kind of hard to top Krampus. But what I got is are the melon heads. You ever heard of these melon heads? Yeah, once or twice. It's not something I like to think about. They're the names given to legendary beings in urban legends in parts of Michigan and Connecticut and Ohio. Described as small humanoids with bulbous heads who occasionally emerge from hiding places to attack people. You digging? Mm-hmm. The melon heads of Michigan are said to reside at Felt Mansion. They originally they were originally children who had hydrocephalus, at least allegedly, and they escaped and became feral, and they started eating people. There you go. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, that's when you know you, you you're in a good neighborhood. Okay, so the Midlandhead stories of Ohio are primarily associated with Cleveland or the suburb of Kirtland. According to the local lore, the Midlandheads were originally orphans under the watch of a mysterious figure known as Doctor Crow. Huh. Crow. Which, why is it always like a doctor mysterious? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like just one dude. He didn't have a staff. I guess not. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere with that, so I wasn't sure if I should jump in. No, I don't know. Crow is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Dr. You... Crow and the Thunderbirds? I don't know. <laughs> tough enough? Ain't that tough enough? <laughs> Crow. <laughs> that's, that's good riff pretty... in that song. Yeah, it's pretty good. Crow is said to have performed unusual experiments on the children who develop large hairless heads and malformed bodies. Why? Why, Crow? Why? Why? Some accounts claim that the children were already suffering from hydrocephalus and that Crow injected even more fluid into their brains. I bet he in Oh, no. You know what? I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Eventually... <laughs> 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 just, like it just hit me mid that joke. I was like, "Oh, these are kids. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say anything." You know who's coming for you, Krampus? Oh God, no, please, no. <laughs> hey, I got boxes on my windows and a shotgun. I'm ready for Krampus. I got the odd feeling that Krampus ain't gonna be stopped by nothing. I'm gonna deck his halls, okay? <laughs> what a double lot buckshot. Eventually, the legend continues. The children killed Crow, burned the orphanage, and retreated to the retreated to the surrounding woods and supposedly fed on babies. Why is it always babies? Well, they're easy and weak. They're so difficult to get at, though. They don't say baby humans. True, but I, I just <laughs> assumed it was implied that he they ate like. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm humans. sure that's what they mean, but. Like, have you ever tried to take candy from a baby? It's, like, damn near impossible. I don't know why people say, like, Oh, it's like taking candy from a baby. I'm like, oh, you pervert. You tried that? What the hell? There you go. Kendall's, Kendall's input. This is <laughs> this is not true. Um, legend in Connecticut. Several variations of the Melonhead myth can be found in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Most instances can be found in Trumbull. So I don't care. That just sounds like a weird place to live. Yeah, like Trumbull, Connecticut? No, thank you, Rapeville. <laughs> according, according to the first variation of the myth, Fairfield County was the location of an asylum for the criminally insane that burned down the fall of 1960, resulting in the death of all of the staff and most of the patients, with 10 to 20 inmates unaccounted for. Great. See, so, in that situation, what do you do, though? I mean, you can't just let them out to let the firefighters in. You just burn? I don't know, dude. That's terrifying. And what do you do when you find out that there's 20 that have gone missing into the woods? You leave. You get as far away. <laughs> <laughs> you just get up and out of there. Well, I think it's time we go to Hollywood. <laughs> don't, you, don't you agree, Martha? <laughs> oh, them monsters won't find us out in picture land. <laughs> they can't afford it, I say. <laughs> they can't afford no bus. One of them city buses. <laughs> Uh, suppose <laughs> can't I'm sorry, Pete. I'm can't sorry, Pete. Uh, can't they track our smell or something? No, not that far, miss. Plug up your ferryman hole. <laughs> Got to put a mask on that smell, miss. <laughs> They're fine to clean out past the Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude. I don't know why people in Connecticut speak like they're from the Deep South, but apparently they do. In our minds, they it, do. Yeah, according think, to us. I think whenever you have, like, woods, they just speak like that. Anything past New Mexico, I just consider it's like... Yeah, so. yeah. Anytime you have, like, bogs or woods or mental asylums or something... Yeah. You got at least one guy going, We gotta plug a paramount hole, man, before <laughs> they come after you and your mi- and your, your boy. Some poor, uneducated fool who doesn't know <laughs> about how nature works. Anyway, the legend states that the melon head's appearance is the result of them having resorted to cannibalism in order to survive the harsh winters of the region, and due to inbreeding, which in turn caused them to develop hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus, Jesus. Uh, according to the <laughs> second vari- <laughs> variation, the melon heads are descendant of the colonial era family Shelton Trumbull, who were banished for accusations of witchcraft. Uh, Causing them to retreat into the woods. As with That's the first legend, logical. yeah. As with the first legend, this variation attributes to the appearance of melonheads due to inbreeding. Melonheads allegedly prey upon humans who wander into their territory. Once again, inbreeding. <laughs> that's a banjo for all those who don't know. I'm playing a banjo because that's <laughs> what you do when you inbreed. You sit on your porch, you play a banjo, then you go make sweet love to your cousin. That's right. Yeah. Not that we know. No, but no. I've seen I've seen enough of it. You read you read newspaper articles. Uh, yeah. There's a couple people who come to my gas station. I'm like pretty sure they weren't reaching too far out of the gene pool, if you know <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like imply anything or point any fingers, but it's like, yeah. They I gotta up say, mo- you know, dude, I'll say like a lot of people shit on the South for being backwoodsy and ancestral. But I ain't. I never see nobody as scary as the people in fucking Dolan Springs, Arizona. Oh my! God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just no. It's a, it's a third world, just kind of isolated right there on the side of the highway on your way to Vegas. Oh my god, it's terrifying. I should go there. I think our fans would enjoy a video. Yeah, I, th- I think trip. they made like a few, like three or four Mad Max movies there. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's terrifying. I think they just left the Thunderdome there to appease them. <laughs> Man, uh, the only—we're uh, serious. The only building, like large building in Dolan Springs, is a library, and it's the protected library. by a chain link fence with barbed wire on it. Yeah, and they—they they put the fire station right next to it. That—that's the kind of place we're talking yeah. about, folks. And people literally build their cars there. Like, I'm not talking like they order parts. I'm talking like they're using sheet metal from sheep sheds, <laughs> and and they're finding tires off of bicycles and shit on the side of the highway, and they're and they, building they, vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> you get like old Yamaha engines and like fenders off of an old Chevy pickup and they build cars out of it. And yeah, that's how they get around the desert. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the hell? Man. Don't don't ever stop there to use the bathroom because the bathroom yeah, is a for lie. one you, yeah, for one you gotta drive a half hour off of the highway. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're not gonna let you out. <laughs> you got one of them pretty city cars. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how much I fetch for that. <laughs> I like After you, we- and I want you. We can do this the easy way or the pokey way. So tell me, how many cats you fit in the trunk? <laughs> I don't know. It's a pretty deep I- trunk. I've never <clears throat> tried it, man. You don't never tried that, man. That's the first thing we do here is fit cats and everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, like, people, people, like, they don't get power out there. They just set fire to stuff. To, it's yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah, they have like the solar panels and no, the high, they turn their piss into drinkable water somehow. <laughs> it's, Magic. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, something radiation. Uh, you know, it's probably radiation from the nuke testing going on in Vegas back in the day. Probably. Anyway, this something had ra- to float over. Something <laughs> got in that valley. Crumpus. All right, this about <laughs> wraps it up for this episode of scary jingly time. Halloween madness. Oh, that's the word. Halloween madness. All right, kids. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>